Back Sims Complete Football fans, I'm your host, Matt Sims, alongside my co-host, Phil Sims. I love saying that, co-host, Phil Sims, you know, because he likes yeah. to be the ringleader, but not in this circus, my friend. All no, right. no. My hey, kids, my wife, everybody took the ringleader thing away from me. Now I'm just a bit player, and I try to do my part. <laughs> and you do. So you, do you do your part fantastically well, and we yeah. appreciate everything that you always do All for right. us that All way. Right. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we're going to break down the, the Giants and the Jets today. What's yeah. on this offseason? Uh, they've been very active, both teams. And, and really the main focus has been kind of the trenches, right? Because these are two teams that – uh, at times, especially in the offensive line side of the football, have struggled uh, to protect their quarterback, to obviously win consistently at the line of scrimmage in the running game. And uh, we know the name of the game in today's you know football. you got to protect the quarterback consistently against a lot of these elite pass rushers around the league, and the Giants have definitely done a focus on that. Where would you like to start, though, in breaking down the Giants' well, offseason? Let me just say this, first yeah. off, the Jets and Giants, just talking about both, we're going to talk about offensive lines because both of them were really terrible last year. <laughs> and it just doesn't give your team a chance to win when your offensive line is struggling. You can't call the plays you want. You can't design certain things. And it's just always guessing. Are we going to, don't want your quarterback to get hit. So we get, like I said, when you get more conservative, you're just helping the defense. So both teams very active in the offensive line. Uh, I, I think it's uh, worked out really well for both of them yeah. when we talk about it. You know, the Giants, they went out there, and it, both of the Giants and Jets, but the Giants, if nothing else, they've gone out there and they've got one, two, at least four offensive linemen they've, they brought in right. or signed. And I, I think they're all good. You know, Jermaine Illuminor from the Las Vegas Raiders, I like him, experienced. John Runyon, you know, he's had a few starts in the NFL. He could be guard, maybe even a tackle. So those two kind of jump out to me, the two first they, the first two they really brought in and got done. And I think that just is going to help the line, give it depth, and give us more faith in the offensive line. Yeah, it for sure is. I mean, they've invested in their two tackles, right? And they're trying to make sure that they're bolstering the interior part of their offensive line now. Daniel Jones coming off of injury, uh, you know, knee and neck from this past year. So it, it really is important for them to, no matter who the quarterback is, right, to be strong in the interior part of that offensive line. And hopefully those franchise guys that they've invested in on the edge come through for them. I think, uh, too, Matt, as we're going to say in, uh, all this, but when you talk about the offensive lines, yeah. it's not it's not anymore, oh, we got five guys, we're ready to go. Right. Man, you got you got a plan for you need depth because I don't know what the injury rate was in the NFL last year with offensive linemen, but it just seemed like they're, half the league, their offensive lines were in shambles because of injuries. So you need depth. You need guys that can play guard and tackle if you need it. I think yeah. that's really important. And I think the Giants, they've kind of uh, – Evan Neal, to me, is a huge key to their football team this year at right tackle. If he comes through, then this offensive line has a chance to be so much better with the new additions and what they had there before. Uh, so that that's going to be big, watching how he plays. Yeah, and that's really uh, one of the main things that we saw from the Giants this past year is that they were essentially starting guys off the streets and, and going oh. against some of the teams that they see in the division with the Eagles, with the Cowboys – now with Dan Quinn uh, over there at Washington, we know that Look they're going to be a presence too and be physical that way. So you just got to you got to keep up with the Joneses uh, for the New York Giants that way and making sure that you're bolstering that offensive line as much as possible. You know, to add to that, they did a great job of uh, adding a premier pass rusher and Brian Burns from the Carolina Big. Panthers. What are your first thoughts on Brian Burns and that addition to this defense? Wow. When I heard it and they got it, I said, oh, I like the deal. So, you know, I've never won all the money and all that. Don't worry about the money. Let's just get the players. <laughs> That's what the general manager of that organization, all organizations are going to do. Yeah. But so I was pretty excited when I saw the trade. So, you know me, I got right on my computer and I started watching Brian Burns play. And I, I got to say this and it's it's real. And I would say otherwise if I believed it. I didn't see any weakness. I know there was somebody in Carolina told me, you know, the Giants overpaid for him. I said, you know, maybe they did. I don't care. If he hits the quarterback and helps their defense, then the Giants win too. Yeah. But he can do everything. Speed, he can rush with, you know, rush with speed. He can chase down running backs down the opposite side. He's tough enough and strong enough. Because when you're that fast, right, as he is, you're going to be strong too. 
So he when he has to set the edge and be the guy that makes sure the runner doesn't get outside the tackle, he's he does that well too. And of course, saying it all, he can really rush the passer. And what you have to do is this, right? You got to worry about him. How are we going to block him? Running back chip, put the tight end to his side. And oh, wait, the Giants have another guy over there on the other side, Kayvon Thibodeau, who came really came on last year, had a good year. So the pair can change this whole – I think they can change the whole defense. Yeah, it definitely can. And, and you're a- absolutely right. When you have a guy like him that's explosive, that can be a game-changing type of player for you on the outside, on the edge like that, uh, opposite now of Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, with sexy Dexy there in the middle, <laughs> it really is difficult for offensive coordinators to kind of pick and choose – how are we going to protect, you know, our young tackle or our offensive line? Are we going to shift them to the left over here to Thibodeau? Are we going to shift to the right to Brian right. Burris? How are we going to do those things? Do we chip them with the running back? So anytime that you're spending uh, just more time in that film room trying to decide on how to slow down a defense, you're winning, right? Because it, it takes away from all the other plays that offensive coordinators can kind of come up with during the week right. because they're like, hey, this is a great out- concept. But if Brian Burns and, and Kayvon Thibodeau are on the field at the exact same time, we're not running it. So uh, and that was always something that we had said in Atlanta. We got a great play action pass here. And as soon as, you know, this player leaves the field, we'll call it. But if he's on oh the field, gosh, yeah. we're yeah, not calling right. it. Right. So yes. um, if you're making coaches think that way, you know, that is a victory for you. And I think this pairing with those three in the front, you know, with Bobby O'Karake, with Micah McFadden. Oh. Um, yeah. You know, two inside linebackers that to me, I think, have just been performing at an extremely high level. Get very excited for this New York Giants defense for this upcoming season. All right. Well, here, here's one thing I love. You know, when we always talk about pass rushers. Yeah. Everybody gets out. Of hell. Well, how many sacks did he have last year? Well, listen, we're going to judge everything just on that one damn number. Forget all the, you know, stopping the run, chasing people from down from behind to tackle them for just what's the word for it? Uh, I'll be nice. You got to muck it up and good pass rushers muck it up, right? Yeah. So I that's what I expect from the Giants to muck things up uh, with that defensive front. And I know this gets you going. Um, we got a new defensive coordinator with the New York Giants. And what what bothered you about? Well, I'm going to tee you up. Kayvon, Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah. Do you want to see him dropping back in pass coverage as much as we saw last oh, year? You're teeing me up. But listen, this, yeah. is, this is one of your grind your gears, okay? This was something that I feel <laughs> like that you would always say, right, is that you were so tired of seeing these exotic blitzes from Wink, you know, who you respect and love as a defensive player. Oh, I like him, yeah. Right? You, you kind of yeah. like that philosophy defensively. But you don't like when you take one of your best pass rushers and drop him into coverage uh, so you can be, you know, exotic defensively. You know, and I think this is something where the Giants will now have the ability to say, you know what? Hey, we can get after the passer with four guys. We can also be exotic and do multiple things in those different looks and still get after the passer. We just don't want to see Kayvon Thibodeau drop it in zone coverage anymore. (laughs) You're right. I don't. I I mean, it would drive me crazy. Watch that go. What the hell is he doing in coverage? Yeah. You know, you're, you know, arguably without, I think, you know, the best pass rusher they have, the speed, everything we've already talked about. So, uh, you know, so it's good. The Giants, Brian Burns, slam dunk to me. And I, if it's not a good year by him and uh, changing the football team, I'll be disappointed as a fan, but of course, as an announcer or whatever you want to call me, uh, too. Yeah. The next guy with the Giants, give me oh. your first thoughts when you saw they signed Drew Locke. All right, Drew Locke. Well, hey, let's do this real quick. Let's backtrack and go ahead. the defense side of the field because I know you were sure. excited about this guy, and that's Jalen Mills, right? Oh, yes. You were yeah. excited about the addition of him at safety, him and Brian Burns, bringing that veteran attitude, I think, to that room, along with Bobby Akarake, with some, some of the young talent that they have on the outside, right, with their young corners and Bank right. and Hankins. I think now this really allows, you know, the Giants, the flexibility, uh, you know, really to lean on one, their – their young ability that they have in the ranks at the corner position, but also now they got they got a good center fielder to make sure oh. that the young guys know what they're doing exactly right. Got to be strong up the middle, right? You know, that's the NFL too. Need some run blocking. You got or the whatever. Tackle, you got the middle linebacker, and now you got and Mills get in the behind, middle, right? So at every yeah. level, you got a veteran and a guy that knows what he's doing. Wherever Jalen Mills has been, he's played well. Yeah. You know, he's a veteran. He understands. You said it right. Communicator with talent and everything. You know, of course, New England had to let him go. They have Jabril Peppers and Kyle Duggar under contract. So he was the odd man out, which is, I think, very good for the Giants. Right. Nothing like a good center fielder 
to cover up errors, to be the communicator like you say when you do that. Hey, leadership on the defensive side or offensive side, always big to me. And, you know, I think it's always a uh, something we miss on when we talk about players. Right. But there's always got to be that guy that can rally the troops or communicate them, whatever it is. And I think Jalen Mills is one of those guys. Yeah, and a guy that in his past, too, has done a little bit of everything, too, especially yes. with the two teams that he's played for. So I think that's another, you know, added bonus for them going forward. All right, so now no let's doubt. get to Drew Locke, right? Okay. You always say this. You, you want to make sure that you have a backup or a third stringer that has a starter-like quality to him. Yeah, straighten up those glasses there. No, me. damn, it's and my head. I guess I got a crooked head. You got a crooked head. Just... Oh, boy. <laughs> I got something. <laughs> but right, go ahead. What they we... add yeah. Drew Locke to the quarterback room, and, and you think that Drew Locke has really progressed tremendously really in the past two years that he's spent in, in Seattle with the Seahawks. Oh, listen, I don't think. I know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I really I hate to say it that way, but I don't care. I'm right. Uh the first year in Seattle, he had a chance to win the job with Geno Smith. He did not – I'm just going to be kind. He did not play well in preseason. Yeah. If you want to say it was bad, then you're getting closer to the word I want to use. It just wasn't good. He was playing too loose, trying to be too aggressive with decision-making throws and you know maybe moving before he had to. And this past year in preseason football in Seattle, he was fantastic. Right. And I watched him. I went, oh, my gosh. I said, Drew Locke has grown up. Yeah. He now has got it. Right. And he did it all during preseason. And then when he was called upon during the season, when uh, Geno got hurt, I thought he played really well in, in a, what was it, a Thursday night or a Monday night uh, against Philadelphia out in Seattle. He drove him down the field. He was getting crushed almost every play, taking big hits. And Geno Smith got crushed all year long. The old line at Seattle, not to get on them, yeah. but it's it, they need to fix it yeah. big time. right? And I know they got some high draft picks there. But, yeah, he hung in there. He made the plays. He made the right decisions. And, you know, too, Matt, I, I think I can see this, and I know you can too. When you see guys on the field, you can see when they just have a presence and they're leading the team. Yeah. And I got that feeling from watching Drew Locke this year, which is was a great – not a – Great surprise, but good for him. Yeah, and also a little bit of a relief, too, for for guys, you know, that when we were evaluating, we liked a lot of what he did. We thought that he oh, yeah. had that raw talent. We thought that he had that ability to be a franchise type of player. And, no uh, you know, good for him that he now has kind of seemed to polish up his game and understand the NFL game and how to play it at a higher level, too, which is uh, a skill, you know, that takes time to learn, you know. And, and that's where I think the Giants did a good job of finding a guy that can – really do a good job of filling in and, and still allowing them to be uh, the same offense without having to, you know, handicap themselves and slow it down because, yeah. you know, the quarterback is a talent enough to, to keep up with what they want to do. So I think yeah, absolutely and the, my la yeah, my last thing would be this about Drew Locke. Look, he did a great job of handling himself with Geno Smith when yeah. Geno won the job and backing him up and whatever. If Daniel Jones is a starter this year for the New York Giants, uh, then I think he'll be – a really good compliment to him, helping helping him out, you know, yep. doing the right thing in the meeting rooms and won't be a distraction from the quarterback position. So I always think that's important. Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy Cutlets. What a quarterback room. <laughs> that's that's almost as bad as some of the quarterback rooms I was a part of with the New York Jets, but that's for uh, another show. Now, uh, uh, transitioning to the Jets now, you know, okay. uh, also another team that has been very active here in the offseason. And again, starting at the offensive line position, you know, how excited were you about the additions that they made on the offensive line for the New York Jets? All right, let's start with Tyron Smith, yeah. the left tackle. Oh, you know, everybody's worried about his injuries. You know, he still played a lot of games. Yeah. Uh, you know, he gets beat up and he can play hurt and all that. And it just has to give you some reassurance about what we're doing on the offensive line. They have a proven veteran, and they just got to get it into the season. But when I watched him, good pass protection guy. I mean, he's, you know, he's everything you want in a tackle. He's tall. I don't know. I'm going to say he's at least 6'5". He's got the long arms, and he's got good feet, and he can stop the pass rush. Is he a great run blocker? No. But you know what? I don't care. <laughs> you know, we can run the ball a lot of things and do a lot to block people in the run game, but pass protection is something the Jets need to really fix, and this is the first uh, piece that really changes their offensive line. I, and, you know, he's not too old. He's still got a couple good years left in him. And um, Aaron Rodgers, all that we know about their offense and what they do, this is a good starting point, like I said. 
Yeah, and then added to that, they get Morgan Moses on the opposite side, oh, too, a, a call it. from him. And this yeah. is the guy that uh, – a, another proven veteran, tough, athletic, can do a little of everything. And this is, you know, potentially – the the starting lineup for the New York Jets offensive line next year, and that's Smith. Yes. Then John Simpson at guard, Tipman yes. at center, Vera Tucker at right guard, and then Morgan Moses opposite on the other tackle right there. And that's a that's a pretty good quality group right there. And that's definitely a dramatic improvement from just a year ago. You know, yeah, it's a it's a you're right, it is. And here's what it does too with all these with the new guys they've gotten. Elijah Vera Tucker can now stay at guard. Right. And if somebody gets hurt, maybe he could be a tackle. I think he's talented enough to play both positions. But at guard, you know, Matt, he's an all pro. He has that kind of talent. He's that good. Yeah. So this, man, now that just, again, it changes everything for him that he can, if he can stay at guard all year long, I'll be surprised if he's not one of those top three or four guards in the league where we're going to talk about him being an all pro. Yeah, no doubt. And as for, of course, what happened last year with Aaron Rodgers and the injury getting hurt four plays into the season. Uh, yeah. The main goal was let's get some veteran guys up there that have had tons of experience that can handle all of the things that Aaron likes to do at the line of scrimmage right. and being intellectual with his fo high football IQ and allowing them to also have a, a physical aspect to this off oh, line, you yeah. know, and, and being able to, win both in rush and passing situations because you know something that you have mentioned to me in the past they, they don't want to throw it 40 times a game you know like everyone wants no. to think with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback they want to be balanced and they want their you know high paid quarterback to make the right decision and to win big games uh you know by by being a great game manager that has the talent to be a game changing like talent so well uh, really it, you know big move for them you said it right Aaron Rodgers is a a, a trim I think a really really beyond good game manager. Yeah. He knows he you know he's going to check it down and do the right thing underneath to help the old line out, to help himself, to help the receivers. And then, you know, if you want him to chuck it down the field, I'm not worried yeah. about that. He's going to – but my big thing about the offensive line, here's what it did getting these guys in there. I got to look. I'm sorry I keep looking away. That's all right. But guys that got great experience last year, Jake Hansen. So that gives them a guard – Wes Schweitzer, you know, he's another one got a lot of experience last year. And then Carter Warren, you know, the fourth round draft pick in last year's draft, you know, he got experience too. So now the Jets got a good starting five and they got some experience with backups too, yeah. which, you know, sooner or later, we know we're going to need a couple backup offensive linemen. So they got that right now. So really tremendous job. It's I'm a little this way. I don't know how you are. But it seems like everybody gets picked up. I go, oh, hell, that's a great pickup. That's oh, like it. Well, that's the time yeah. of year that it is. And yeah, it is. Everything looks is. great. Everyone's making great moves. No one's making stupid moves right now. And, well, and, there are some making stupid and, moves. And, yeah. and the Jets and the Giants, yeah. The Jets and the Giants <laughs> are making moves that are very identical, all right? Um, shout out to my cousin Vinny right there with that one. But uh, Oh, yeah. I, Ty I was Rod, to out. yeah. <laughs> Tyrod okay. Taylor now is the oh. – uh, addition now to being the backup quarterback. Huge fan of Tyrod myself. Uh, we discussed him earlier this season uh, when he was thrown into the starting lineup for Daniel Jones and the New York Giants on this podcast. But again, just solidifying that backup spot for oh. them, a veteran. Uh, I think him and Aaron Rodgers in the same room. Uh, I don't think that you, you miss quite as much of a beat as maybe they did a year ago uh, with happening with what happened to Aaron Rodgers. So Tyrod Taylor, absolutely an upgrade at the backup quarterback position. And then defensively, uh, signed Kinlaw, right, as a free yeah, agent from, Kinlaw, yeah. from the San Francisco 49ers a year ago. And, you know, what, what are your thoughts about Kinlaw and just his situation with the New York Jets? Well, let me do both. I want to do Kinlaw. Disappointment with San Francisco. High draft pick. Yeah. That really never worked out. Never became the pass rusher they were hoping he, that he would be. And, you know, he had to split a lot of time out there because they had they they bring in defensive linemen like they're free, you know, out there in San Francisco. But so when you get guys like this, I think motivation is real. He's right. got to come in here, reestablish himself, who he is in the NFL. He was a first round draft pick, all that stuff. And I think that's going to work out well for him. I, I think I just want to say this about Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, I would put him really high. If we judge the 32 backups in NFL, he would be. I, you know, in the top 10 for sure. Top I just five. think his skill set, like, you know, it's got a good arm. Well, I saw it with the giants. It didn't fall, fall off at all. Throws it deep down the field and he's still very mobile. Yeah. So it's, it's a, 
kind of a contrast with him and Aaron Rodgers, but it's it's a good contrast. It's going to work well, I think, for the New York Jets. And just a veteran that I think other players can trust and count on and rely on yeah. and not have to worry about, you know, the drama that that surrounds that quarterback room like it was a year ago. Um, you know, and that's that's nothing against Zach Wilson and all that kind of stuff, too. It's just unfortunately, you know, things didn't go well enough for him in New York. And now it's just kind of time for for them to move on from that. Right. And it's really Absolutely. Best for both parties, you know, going forward in their career. So uh, and I think Tyrod, you know, I think he he's adaptable to really any yeah. situation. He's seen it all. He's a pro's pro and he'll be ready to go for this New York Jets team. You know, outside of that, right, with with really the Jets and the moves that they made this offseason, where do you see their emphasis, you know, in, in the draft this year? They have the pick. What is it? Pick number 10, I believe. Pick number 10 in the first yep. round. You know, where, where would you put the emphasis for the New York Jets this year? at pick Okay, nine? here we go. That's a good question. Um, I would say it depends on what happens, of course, in the first nine picks. <laughs> but I would think one of these things, I think it's either going to be an offensive tackle. Okay. Because that just gives them more security. And maybe that tackle could come in and learn a little bit from the guys that are in front of him, which I think, I mean, come on. Tyron Smith, you, what's he going to teach you? Whatever you need to know to make you a better player. Right. So tackle could be there. There will be a good tackle there, I think, for the Jets to draft. And maybe the receivers, I don't know. I haven't really looked and see what order I think they'll go in. But there's going to be a really good receiver there, too. I think the Jets need both of those things. Yeah, I, so, I would agree with that, too. I, I would not be uh, – I, I really would love, honestly, if they did focus on the receiver position and get another young receiver out opposite of uh, Garrett Wilson. And really just to add speed to this offense, which to me a year ago uh, looked extremely slow at times. And, yes. and I think that just for what they're trying to do offensively, being a little bit more on the conservative side, like you mentioned, and let Aaron Rodgers make the right decision and then, you know, make the, you know, the game ceiling type of throw <laughs> to have someone explosive and a game changing like talent opposite of Garrett Wilson to give, you know, easier coverage identity and stuff like that for your quarterback, whoever it is. Right. And for your right. offense, I think that would be a huge bonus for for this football team for right now and then many years into the future. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll go into the wide receivers here later. We'll do some podcasts on them, and then I think we'll we'll both have a better feel. Will there be one of the maybe top three wide receivers still at number ten? Will the Jets go that way? Yeah. If I had to guess, so if you and I were having a friendly wager, which I lost quite a few of those to you during the year, um, I would say they'll take a tackle. Okay. Because I I just think there's going to be a group of uh, tackles and guards that are going to go big or a lot and fast or whatever once it starts going. Yeah. And I think the Jets want to be part of that because I just, I don't know. I haven't studied the wide receivers in depth yet. I don't know if you wait till the second round, can you still get the impact player uh, that you want? It's a and deep so, year for receivers. You know, the, now the top of the of the list is like, everyone's kind of claiming to be superstars and like, you know, guys yeah. that'll be ready to go, but it is going to be a deep year at the receiver position. Um, you know, offensive line. I feel like, you know, it's it's an overlooked position every year in the draft, and then every year more guys get drafted earlier than what was projected because, let's face it, nobody really cares about offensive linemen in a lot of these shows, and that's not what drives <laughs> a lot of clicks. So well, uh, that's really just the truth uh, and the nature of the media and the football world that we live in right now, but would yeah, not be shocked well, if it was tackled there at 10. Yeah, let me say this. You know, picking tackles in the draft, it's every bit as questionable as picking quarterbacks. Right. I mean, man, when you get a tackle and you draft one in the first round, he comes in. Rashawn Slater for the Chargers. That's one that comes to my mind. He came in, and in the first day, first game, he was like, oh, my gosh. I think he – well, I know he did. He played against Chase Young. Yeah. And they played against each other in college. I went back and watched the college when they played against each other, and I went, oh, Slater was winning those battles. Right. Uh, you know, so – Guys like that are just few and far between. It just seems like the tackle, it's just hit or miss with the, so many of them in the draft now. Yeah. But there are good ones this year, but we got to see them in the NFL first. So you and I will talk about the wager later. I'll take the tackle. You got the wide receiver. We'll take that. Absolutely. Okay. I, I, I like right. that. I like my chances. All right. So that's all we got for Sims Complete. And this, this one, uh, you know, Jets Giants talk. As of right now, we're excited with what they did. You know, we'll see when the season starts. 
Um, you know, it's just like Kirby enthusiasm. What killed him? Uh, the Jets. A little bit of the Knicks, <laughs> but we'll get to that stuff later. That's all we got for Sims Complete. Thank you so much for tuning uh, in. Uh, follow uh, Phil Sims at Phil Sims on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I am Sims Complete on Instagram, on Twitter. Thank you to Believe Network, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody.